Hello. Today we're going to focus on elasticity. Specifically, we're going to look at this consumer's utility function being a Cobb Douglas utility function subject to this budget constraint. And we're going to look at their own price elasticity for good one, their cross price elasticity for good one, and their income elasticity for good one. So to start, we're looking at x1 times x2 as our utility function and our traditional budget constraint of P1x1 plus P2x2 equals M. As a quick note on what elasticity is, elasticity is the quantity response to a change in one of our other variables. So for instance, if we're looking at own price elasticity, we're saying how much does the quantity demanded of good one for this consumer change as we change our price of good one. Same thing for cross price elasticity, except we're saying how much does the quantity of good one demanded for cons this consumer change as we change the price of good two instead. And then finally for income elasticity, we're saying the same thing again, but how much does our quantity demanded of good one for this consumer change as our income changes? And you can think about these a few different ways, but I like to say maybe the percent change in quantity based on a 1% increase in price of you know, our good one would be our own price elasticity, for instance. Okay, with that in mind, let's look at our different elasticity functions. So to start, we'll look at our own price elasticity function. That's going to be elasticity is equal to the derivative of our demand function for good one with respect to price one times our price one over our demand function for good one. That's going to be own price elasticity. Cross price elasticity is going to look pretty similar. The only difference being that we're going to place in price of good two anywhere we see price of good one in this own price elasticity formula. So instead it'll be the derivative of good one with respect to price of good two times the price of good two over our x1 function. And then finally, if we're looking at our income elasticity, it's going to be our elasticity is equal to our derivative of our x1 function with respect to income instead times our income over the amount of good one we purchase. Okay, so those are our elasticity formulas. The common through line that we hopefully see here is that we need to find our demand function for good one, right? Each of these calls for a demand function for good one. So let's start there. And remember, finding the demand function for good one is essentially what we've been doing since midterm one. It's looking at this utility function, subjecting it to this budget constraint, and then finding our optimal amount of good one that this consumer wishes to purchase. So to start that process, we're going to take our marginal rate of substitution of this utility function. So we're going to say the marginal utility of x1 over the marginal utility of x2 is our marginal rate of substitution. That means we're taking the partial derivative with respect to x1 on the top here. Partial derivative of this utility function with respect to x1 is x2. And then the partial derivative of this utility function for x2 would be x1. So our MRS, or marginal rate of substitution, would be x2 over x1 in this case. Our next step is always to take this x2 over x1 and set it equal to P1 over P2, or a budget constraint, since we have a Cobb-Douglas utility function. If that's the case, we're going to rearrange and say x2 is equal to P1 over P2 times x1. Going to take this identity and plug it into our budget constraint, so P1 x1 plus P2 times, and we're going to plug this right here into this slot here for x2 and say p1 x over p2 x1 equals our income. 
Okay, from there, I'm gonna cancel these P2s out and I'm gonna say P1 X1 plus P1 X1 is equal to M. So two P1 X1 equals M. X1 is equal to M over two P1. Okay, and that right there is our demand function for good one. This is how much good one cons this consumer purchases optimally. Okay, that's gonna be useful to find our own price elasticity, our cross price, and our income elasticities. Okay, so let's start with own price. For own price elasticity, remember again that our elasticity formula is the derivative of this demand function with respect to P1 times P1 over that same demand function. So we'll say derivative of X1 with respect to P1 times P1 over X1 again. And so our derivative of this utility or rather demand function would be X1 equals M over two. Let's rewrite this as P1 to the negative first then illuminates what we need to do with this, this sign here, right? Or this exponent. So we need to drop down this negative one and say negative M over two. And then remember, we always subtract one from our exponent. So M over two times P one to the negative two. So this whole portion right here is gonna be negative M over two P one squared. And then again, we have to multiply, we have to bring this down and multiply still by P1 over our demand function, which is again, M over two P1, right? So this looks pretty hectic, but I'm gonna show you that a lot of it cancels out. So we're gonna say negative M over two P1 squared times, let's bring up this P, this two P1. Let's take that P1 and that two and bring it up to the top here. So we say two P1 squared, right? Over M. And then notice after we do that, all of it cancels out, right? These M's cancel out, these two P1 squareds cancel out. We're left with negative one. So our own price elasticity for this demand function x1 for this consumer is negative one. Or for every 1% increase in price, I decrease my quantity consumed by 1%, right? Okay, so now let's take a look at cross price just to kind of compare. So cross price, we're gonna say, let's look at our demand function again, we're gonna say X1 equals M over two P1. Okay, so right away, notice that there's no P2 in this demand function. If price of good two is not a variable in this demand function, then the derivative of X1 with respect to P2 is just gonna be zero, right? There's no change. Um, given a change in price of good two. So we're gonna have zero times P2 over X1, which will still be zero. So we can say right away that our cross price elasticity is just zero, okay? So cross price elasticity is going to be zero um, given the fact that there's no P2 in our function. And then finally, we're gonna look at our income elasticity. Income elasticity, we're gonna again write down our demand function, X1 equals M over two P1. We're gonna say the derivative of X1 with respect to income now times income over our X1 function. Okay, derivative of X1 with respect to M. We're gonna say that this M already has an exponent of one, so we drop down that one, and then we subtract by one, and we're left with an m to the power of zero over two p1. 
times m over m over 2p1, right? A lot of m's there, but hopefully that makes sense, right? We're taking our derivative, and then we're just slotting in this x1 here for this x1 here, okay? We're left with m to the power of 0, which is anything to the power of 0 is 1. That's 1 over 2p1 times 2p1. And then times m over m. So these m's, again, are going to cancel out. So we're just left with 1 over 1, right? Because these 2p1s also cancel out. And if we're left with 1 over 1, then our income elasticity is just going to be 1. And the interpretation of an income elasticity of 1 means with every 1% increase in income, I increase the quantity demanded of good one by one. So that makes sense, right? Let's run through each of these interpretations again. As price of good one increases by 1%, I decrease the amount of quantity I consume by 1%. That's normal to see, right? Is income, or as price rather increases, I should buy less of that good in a normal situation or ordinary situation. For cross price elasticity, since there's no price two involved in my demand function for good one, as price two changes, that has no effect or zero impact on the amount of good one I purchase. And then finally, with income, as income increases 1%, I actually increase the amount of good one I purchase by 1%. Again, that makes sense, right? As income increases, I should buy more of that good. That's a normal case, 